Okay, guys, welcome back to the next episode of our uh, build an RPG series. So this time we're actually going to be looking uh, again at the character controller, but we're going to start uh, putting in some of the weapons. Now, in the last video, we added on the uh, inventory manager, the oh, sorry, the item manager uh, down here, which we can add in all sorts of things to the player's inventory so that they can equip um, different weapons and different items. Um, before we go equipping any of them on, though, I want to actually get items that match my um, player model. Uh, the ones that come as the default uh, with Invector, they're easy enough to work with and to use as, um, you know, the sort of starting out and uh, getting things in place. But some of the, the weapons and art assets you have might end up having different um, handholds or, you know, different uh, dimensions to the weapons that are there. So first off, we've got to go through um, building one of the weapons. I'll show you how easy it is to actually replace uh, the default ones that are there with the new ones. So let's get started into that. First thing we're going to need to look for is the sword. So I'm going to go the sword, I think. Uh, so this brings us... Okay, so that gets us the FBX. So we need to actually have... I'm just going to type in sword. And there's all sorts of things that will pop up because I have so much stuff uh, in my thing listed as V1. There we go. So this is the one we want here. We actually want the prefab that's got the um, melee object and all the hit effects and the equipment script uh, on it. Um, oh, been on there, that's fine. Uh, so we've got obviously a short and a long sword. I'm going to stick mostly with the long sword for now. If you remember, in, um, as I was saying with uh, the, the first video, I'm only really going to have um, three types of the, the same item. Um, so I'm going to have three different swords. I'm going to go with long because I think most of my swords are a bit longer than the, um, the short one. And we might just replace the short one with an axe or even just replace the axe. Anyway. Uh, what we're going to do to change it over to the some of the new um, meshes that we have is actually just drag it into the hierarchy and that's going to place it at the point in the scene that it's got listed here. See it's got these numbers um, on it. We will grab that and we're actually just going to zero that out. So I'm just going to click on that, go reset position and now it's at the, the zero point. Um, I'm going to actually hide my player and my UI while I do this so that it doesn't get in the way when we're sitting here um, for the canvas oh, and, and canvas and now you can see that little part there in the scene has disappeared so that's good I'm going to now click on this one and let's just have a look at what uh, what this prefab is so sword v long that's our top one and that's got uh, a little comment section here which is um, to help you when you're putting together the weapon uh, it's got the weapon script and then it's got hit effects, which we can open up, and then there's the sounds. So there's sounds that we can add to it, so when it's being used, what it sounds like when it's supposed to hit. These all tie in with the uh, the attack animations, I believe. Um, and then, yeah, defense sounds, voice level particles, all those sorts of things. Um, and then it's also got the uh, equipment script here, which obviously ties into our item manager for when we go to pick it up. And if we open this up, you can see we've got the components, which is just an empty transform. Then we've got the hitbox, which is this yellow box around the weapon, so we can um, shape that to where we want the actual um, damage part of the weapon to be. And then sword V long, um, which is the mesh renderer underneath that. So uh, very simple to change it over. What we need to do is uh, I've already got sword uh, search for, so we just want to find the sword that uh, nice and matches. That's a bit too Final Fantasy-ish. Let's go up with something better. Here's a crystal or mate sword. That looks pretty damn cool. <laughs> that one is, I just want a, a regular sword. No, no, that's also too cool. Uh, where are we? An ornate sword. Uh, a bit too beaten up. But you know what? Beaten up's all right for, for what we want. So let's go with that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to drop it to the components and make it a child of that. And now you can see uh, it's, yeah, roughly a bit bigger than what we're used to with our sword. So we might drop it down or we might leave it and we can um, adjust it a little bit later when we get it into the player's hand. But, of course, it's pointed in the, um, the direction that we don't want it to be pointed, so we need to rotate that. So I'm going to push 90, that weighs it down flat, and then I'll push 90, no, because it's doing it from local, we want maybe global. And if I go 90, no, that's still doing it from, where am I? What am I trying? I have to just do it on the z-axis, 90. No, okay. So, let's just have a look at why that's doing it that way so negative 90 negative so it's just this this really gets me I, I don't quite understand how that all works out but when we look at our model it is effectively in the position we need it to be um, it is a little bit weird on that other rotation why is that looking like that 
There we go. So you just basically align it with the other one. Now we can see that the base of the handle is down here, so that's also the pivot point. That's roughly where we want the um, the sword grip point to be, because um, the grip will actually be at the pivot of the, the weapon. So we might bring that down yeah, just a little bit, because you see it's not that grip and it's not the components, it's the actual sword V long, which sits up a little bit higher. So we might move that back up just a little bit. And now what we can actually do is just get rid of this renderer here. We don't need that anymore. Um, but what we are going to do is we're going to go um, Rusty Sword. We're going to change the name of that. And then, of course, we're going to use the folder structure that I set up for uh, Game Components, Items and Equipment, Weapons. And then we're going to drag it down here to create a brand new prefab. So we've still got that original V Longsword or Longsword um, prefab already made in the folder where it originally was. Now we've turned this into a completely new prefab. Um, so what we need to do now is just have a look. We want to adjust our hitbox. So we're going to click on that. Um, now for the hitbox, we can actually just adjust the collider. We don't have to adjust the, the rest of it. So I only really want the tip of it to be active. So we're going to click on that, bring that down a little bit. And we can see that it's roughly the size that we want to cover. Um, a little bit of the surrounds of it, but we've left our handle nice and blank to be held onto. Uh, it's nice to be held. And then we go to this one here, and we don't have to change any of this stuff because we're actually just going to leave it exactly as it is. Um, and so, yeah, it's got the hitbox here for the different hitboxes. Damage modifier, we don't need to modify the damage on it. Uh, the hit effects, we're going to leave it because it's still already set up as a sword. But what we're going to do is we're going to click apply so that we apply the change to the hitbox to our prefab and then we are ready to put it into play. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our player back and we're going to bring our aim canvas back. We're also going to bring the, back the UI. We're going to hide this for now because we want to leave it in there in case we need to make some edits to it later, but right now we can leave it as it is. And then what we want to do is we're going to click on the player and we're going to go to add item. Now we're going to add the V long sword if I can find where it went to. Uh, oh, okay, it's listed here as Greatsword. Yep, so that would be what we actually need. So we're going to click on that. Yeah, and you can see this is the long sword. It's named differently. I think they changed the name in one of the versions, but didn't change the prefab name. Um, what we're going to do, though, is before... That's just going to spawn us the original one that we put out there, not our changed one. So we need to click on this. It's going to open up a new window, again, off screen for you guys, but for me, it opens up. And as you can see here, this is the item list for the greatsword and the Wii weapon. So it's got that there. That's the picture that we need for the icon. Um, now here it says here, this is the original object. So this is Sword V Long, which is the one that we first had. Um, and when it's dropped, it just becomes a collectible equipment like this. We don't want that anymore. We want Rusty Sword. So we're going to click on this little circle. We're going to type in Rusty. And here it is here. So now it's going to spawn the Rusty Sword object when we equip it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close that up. Oh, actually, what I want to do, um, yep, I'll leave that for now. We'll close that up. We are going to apply this. And we're actually going to set it to auto-equip so that when we start the game, it's already equipped. So I don't have to go through the menu or anything like that. Uh, now what we're going to do is we uh, maximize and play. We're going to hit the play button. Now it's going to go to the default equip point, which isn't too bad. It's almost in our hands, but obviously we're going to need to modify that. Um, but as you can see, the sword is pretty much the right size for what we want. When we attack, we are swinging the sword and then stabbing, and we are passing damage, and everything is working exactly as it's supposed to be. So that's how easy it is to actually just modify those base um, weapons that they've already got. Obviously, we can change up the statistics and everything of it a little bit later. But now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get that weapon in the right location. Now we're going to hit escape and hit the stop button here. Um, there's a few ways that we need to do that, but what we actually want to do is we want to put in a little bit of forethought for the future. We're going to have several weapons that are varying sizes and varying shapes and whatnot. Um, at the moment, when we open this up, we come down here, we go to custom settings, we see custom handler is the melee handler, or melee handler, um, which basically means that it's trying to find a spot on our player, um, which if I go, I'll have to open it up here. Um, run down the route to, uh, we've already got the spine kind of to the right because it's going to appear in our right hand uh, by default. 
And see here we've got this here, default hand wire. So this is basically the, the spot where weapons will spawn under. This is the socket where we hold onto objects. It's a child of the hand um, and we need to adjust it so it's in the right spot to match the mesh of our model. Um, now this one here is actually saying it's looking for one named melee handler. Because it can't find that, it goes, that doesn't exist, so I'm just going to go straight for the default handler. Um, but of course, because we're going to have things like um, pistols, or, well, well, we're going to have the rifle, we're also going to have the bow. Uh, the bow actually appears on the left hand, so it won't, won't affect this. Um, but yeah, other equipable items, we're going to, they're all going to have different shapes and different sizes and different hold positions. So this is going to have to change each time we want to apply one of those. So what we do is we make a custom handler in order to match that. Now, I don't want um, this one to just be a base melee handler. I want to actually name this one after my sword. So we're going to have a few of these little sockets because um, I just think because of the, the difference in the, the swords that we have. So I'm just going to put sword, um, I'm going to go actually I'm going to call it rusty, rusty handler. So I'm also going to actually drop that to a lowercase r. I'm going to control C that one. So I've got that copied um, to the clipboard. Um, other things to look at is the equip ID 3, that's the thing to tell it um, where to pull the equip from. So when you've got like a larger sword, you might want it to pull from like over the shoulder or from your left hand um, thigh area, that sort of thing. Um, and this equip ID is the one that determines where it is you're getting it from. And then the equip delay time is um, when it appears in your hand. We'll go over that a little bit um, in one of the other episodes when we do a little bit more uh, editing with our items and um, paying a bit more attention to them. But for now, we've got it set up to go through there. So on our player, we need to actually create that handler um, in order to equip it there. And to do that, we need to go to the melee manager. Uh, correction, we need to go to our item manager and open equip, please. My apologies. We need to come down here where it says right arm, because again, we're equipping it to our right hand. So it needs to go through that one there. Um, default handler is again, it's this transform. If we click on that, you see it's highlighted over here in the hierarchy. We need to add in a custom handle. So we're going to click on custom handles, new handler. It's going to be parent bone to the right hand, which is obviously where we want it to sit. Um, now we need to paste rusty handler into there and we're going to click create. So now it's going to set that little transform at the default position, which happens to be the same as the default handler. So this one's called rusty handler. We're going to click on the player, we're going to apply that so that it saves it to our prefab. Now here's the cool part and here's where we're going to be doing some of the modifications. So I'm going to take maximize off because I want to be able to switch through the different um, to the scene mode. So I'm going to click play now and as you can see it has automatically gone into his hand and if I hit escape and just click somewhere off screen so it doesn't move. So you can see it's in his hand. Uh, if we go to the scene I can click on it and if we come down here, it's now under Rusty Handler instead of Default Handler, which is where it was sitting before. So we've got that. Now in order to move it to um, exactly where we want, we need to move this handler. We don't want to move the Rusty Sword underneath it, because we want to leave that at whatever its position value is um, where it is now, and the prefab that it comes with, because if we start adjusting that, um, we will get bad results, and that's not what we want to have. So we're going to come down here to Rusty Handler, and uh, now we are at Pivot and Local, uh, and we want to adjust that so it moves to where we need it to move to. So I'm just going to click on that there. I'm just going to actually pause it. Um, when it's a melee weapon, it's fine. You should be able to pause it and it won't give you any troubles. So I'm just going to align it up with, uh, with his hand as best as I can to make it look like it really matches. And I'm going to come up here. Is that pointed out in the right direction? Does it sort of align properly with his hand? Oh, I think I might need to rotate it just slightly. Maybe even a little bit more so it goes up that way. I think that looks more in line with his hand. Uh, clipping through the bottom somehow. No, look, that looks pretty much right for where it is. Um, so what I'm going to do now is before I click unplay or unpause, anything like that, I'm going to copy component, going to unpause. We're going to swing it a few times. Does it work? Yep, all seems to be fine. And I'm going to run around. Tack, tack. Attack. It's not clipping into the floor and making me hit default. Um, the head track is certainly giving me some issues because obviously when I move around like this, I've only got a very small play space for the mouse. If I had a controller, it might be alright. In fact, I'm quite a controller and let's see how that goes. Um, this is one of the cool things uh, that 
comes with the um, Invector controllers that its default values uh, actually work between mouse and keyboard to um, the gamepad uh, without any real serious issue. I'm sorry if my voice is trailing off a little bit there, but I just need to dig up my controller from the mess of cables that are out. So now we've got the joystick connected and it just automatically works the way we want. Going to swing my sword. And this is a lot easier when you're doing third person melee stuff because I can use the right stick to aim properly and I don't have to worry about the mouse cursor going out of the frame. Jump, crawl, stagger, stagger, crawl, crawl. There we go. And then if we lock on, you can see that. Let's move in a bit closer. Wah. Wah. Alright, and we'll unclip. Alright, so that's all working the way we want it. Um, now we're going to click pause. Now, remember we copied the component values for the rusty handler because it was in the, the direction where we want, but now that we've stopped the play mode, it's now gone back to the exact same spot the default handler is in, and we know that that's not going to work. So we need to come here, we need to paste component values. I really like when it's got this E, negative 05 and all that sort of stuff. It's um, the way that it reads the angles is weird. It's like it's had 70 twists on it instead of yeah, whatever. Um, but it should be at the right uh, the right properties at the moment. So we'll test that out. Let's apply that to our player. Let's click play. And yep, sure enough, it sits in the hand the way we want it to sit. Uh, I mean, it could be a little bit patched up, but for now, that's fine. So now anything that uses the rusty handler will sit in that position here. So it looks like it's going up through its thumb. Doesn't matter, I'm going to leave it like that for now. I can always patch that up a little bit later. And there we go, and that's how easy it is to place a melee weapon on our character. Whee! And we'll just pause that there. Alright, cool, so that's how we've got that going. So thank you for watching uh, this episode. Um, I'm going to cut it there so it uh, keeps it down short. I think in the next episode I'm actually going to um, set up a staff as a, a ranged weapon, and maybe even a rifle, depending on uh, how much time we get. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in the next episode.